at Winchester, engineering announcements for the radio and television trade. week's announcements for the radio and television trade brought to you by the IBA. Today we talk about television aerials and coaxial cables. How long do they last? In transmitter news, conversion work to extend Channel 4 coverage, details of new relays at Austwick and Moctra, and alterations to the aerial at Plymouth North Road to improve reception to the north of the relay. But first, following on from our visit a couple of weeks ago to the exhibition organised by the Confederation of Aerial Industries, Paul Copel talks to Pat Hawker about television aerials. In a report on the CAI exhibition recently, Pat, it was mentioned that aerials don't really last forever. I wonder if I could sort of take this a bit further this week and say to you, well, why don't they last forever? I think a lot of uh, members of the public are under the impression that they probably do last forever. Yes, well, of course, there's some obvious problems. You get a really strong storm and you get storm damage tending to either knock off bits of elements or actually bringing the whole thing crashing down. But that's much less of a problem these days than with the longer elements of the old VHF aerials. But nevertheless, metal fatigue and metal corrosion does take a toll of aerials, even today. How long can one expect an aerial to last? Well, this depends very much on where it is. If it's in a rural area, it probably will last many more years than if, for instance, you're by the seaside or in an industrial area where there is much salt in the atmosphere or chemicals that cause the corrosion. But can you put a number of years on it in a rural area? I just don't think you can put the number of years. It, it really depends very much. But of course, it's not only the aerials themselves. The feeder cables are particularly prone to damage. There's two main causes of damage to the cable. There's moisture getting into the cable itself, um, through the, the outer shields and so on and causing much greater attenuation of the signal but there's also the problem of coaxial cable that's in strong sunlight for long hours of the day and that causes what's called ultraviolet radiation damage. We've looked at the problems if you like now perhaps we could look at what some of the solutions might be I mean are there any new developments that might help with this corrosion? Well, I don't think that there's a great deal in actual the length of life because, on, as I say, on the whole, the, the UHF aerial is, is reasonably long-lasting. But there is still, of course, a lot of development going on to try and improve aerials' performance, for instance, to get less side lobe and pick up and things like that. Um, and there's also a lot of work being done for the future for um, satellites, although most people always think of satellite aerials as being dish aerials. Work is being done on flat plate type of aerials, which would be just mounted on the side of the wall of a house and so on, and which would be uh, much more convenient for the average householder. If people are having problems with their aerials, could it be not so much that the aerial is damaged, but they've got the wrong sort of aerial? Presumably, if you're in a valley, you might need a totally different aerial than if you're on the top of a hill. Oh, indeed. I mean, the uh, gain of the, of the aerial is very much dependent upon your particular site. And of course there are still problems and there are bound to be always problems with UHF television of the urban shadowing, the people who are behind big buildings and trees particularly and things like this. And that is why it is so difficult to say to anybody, you must have a such and such aerial. You really have to go by the particular area you're in and the particular circumstances. Which is really where the advice of the dealers comes in, doesn't it? Oh, they indeed. know the I local mean, situation. The dealer and the aerial installer, if they are... Uh, up to the mark and they, they can give advice which is far better than can be given at a distance and just general advice. But is there any advice that the IBA does offer on aerials? Oh aerial yes, we, 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 we have, a, uh, have a leaflet on good reception of uh, television and, and radio 
and we do get quite a lot of demand for that leaflet, but we always prepare to send them out. And copies of the good reception leaflet can be obtained from Crawley Court. Transmitter news now, starting with special announcements. First, a reminder about the aerial maintenance at Stockland Hill, where reduced power operation and occasional interruptions will continue until about the middle of July. And in the north, the same applies to Pontop Pike and Corbeck, but until the end of July. In Scotland, Gartley Moor is liable to reduced power and interruptions mornings only until Friday. This is for aerial maintenance. Also in Scotland, the service to the Shetlands from Bresse is liable to interruption on Thursday between 10 in the morning and 5 p.m. for electricity board maintenance. In the north of England, the Skipton relay is expected to be off between 6.30 and midday from today until Thursday for mast painting. And from next Monday until next Wednesday, that's the 24th of June, the Whitworth relay is expected to be off between 6.30 and midday. Moving south and more mast painting, Morven is expected to be off on Thursday and Friday between 8 o'clock and midday. And in the southwest, the Galville relay near Penzance is expected to be off on Thursday between 9.30 and midday for aerial maintenance. In Wales, the Pontadawe relay is expected to be off between 6 and 10.30 each morning from today until Friday for aerial maintenance. Today, Thlinon will be off from 9.30 to 3 p.m. and Karegidudrian will be off between 1 o'clock and 4 p.m. This is for electrical inspections. New relays next, starting with Austwick near Settle, North Yorkshire, which is due on air in a week or two. This relay covers about 550 people in Austwick and the rural areas south of Clapham, including Lockland. Granada Television and TVAM will be on Channel 49, with Channel 4 on 42. The aerial group is B and vertically polarised. Austwick is expected on air in a week or two. And in Wales, the relay at Mochda near Colwyn Bay is also expected on air in a week or two. It will cover about 700 people in an area just north of Mochda. HTV Wales and TVAM will be on Channel 23, with S4C on Channel 29. The aerial group is A, vertically polarised. That's Mokta, expected on in a week or two. Channel 4 next, with another relay now on air. In Greater London, Chingford on Channel 48 covers a population of 3,500. Due in a week or two, in the Grampian region, Rose Harty on Channel 47, in the north of England, Ladder Hill on Channel 29, Dalton on Channel 53, and Macclesfield on Channel 32. And in Greater London, Walthamstow on Channel 68. And finally, news of alterations to the aerial at Plymouth North Road. The alterations, which do not affect existing viewers, extend coverage to an area north of the transmitter. The additional area served between the railway station and the cemetery is part of Central Park Avenue and part of Ridge Park Avenue. And a reminder that the programmes from TSW and TVAM are on Channel 43 with Channel 4 on 50. The aerial group is B, vertically polarised. That's alterations to the Plymouth North Road aerial now completed. Well, that's all for this week. If you have any technical queries or if you want a copy of the Good Reception leaflet, do contact us. Our address, Engineering Information Service, Independent Broadcasting Authority, Crawley Court, Winchester, Hampshire, SO 21 2QA. Our telephone number is Winchester, that's STD code 0962 822444. We'll join us again next Tuesday, either at 9.15 or 12.15. And until then, goodbye from Crawley Court. Thank you.